everyone. My name is James Allen. I manage the European region here at Payoneer. And over the next 20 minutes or so, I thought I'd share with you some developments we're seeing in uh, European payments uh, this year. Uh, perhaps first I'll start with an introduction to Payoneer in Europe. Uh, we manage 45 countries now and give our customers access to over 150 currencies. Uh, we're based in six offices. Uh, myself, I'm based normally in the London office. Uh, we cover 25 languages and we're lucky enough to have over a million account holders now in Europe. And you can see here some of the familiar brands that we work with on a daily basis. So five payment trends that have shaped our year so far. Well, starting off with regulation, um, regulators are directing their attention on risk reduction and standardization, um, uh, kind of in the wake of this new trend of open banking. Um, and really as, as disruptive technology and, and new entrants uh, are coming to the sector, uh, regulators are prioritizing data protection, um, uh, open banking, as I mentioned, uh, this is really for um, uh, multiple providers to have access to their um, rails. Uh, cryptocurrencies, so um, the need to address uh, any misuse of cryptocurrencies, so tax evasion and money laundering in particular. Uh, and then there's big tech regulation in order to create a level playing field for all uh, players. Uh, digital identity has definitely gained momentum. Um, really here there's a big focus around um, secure access and data integrity um, and, and really the trend we're seeing is uh, establishment of universal standards that will synchronize the various schemes and, and help digital ent identity to be used commercially. Uh, instant payments, um, quite a hot topic um, and really we can wrap a, um, open banking in here once again and, and what's happened is a drive towards um, faster and instant payments uh, and open banking so again this is where um, other companies can access the um, back office and rails is actually a, a, an exposure of the back office of, of some traditional banks and um, some of this is, is kind of um, actually stemming from the 1970s um, so what these are uh, um, uh, kind of focus now needs to be is around uh, um, supporting new products and services and handling real-time payments and 24-7 processing. Um, there's there's a lot of um, desire to move more to cloud hosting for easy deployment and scalability. Um, there's this uh, uh, um, concept of providing um, a, a serv uh, your products as a service. So that's um, in um, many different formats, including white label or like an API um, integration, and as we kind of do with a, a lot of our partners. Um, and then there's this uh, um, um, kind of emerging um, trend to try and support um, omni-channel capabilities. So not just online or offline, but um, the, the thought that uh, many merchants will operate in uh, uh, mobile, online uh, and offline environments. Um, merchants are putting pressure on uh, to adapt uh, alternative payment methods um, and really that's driven um, often by their customers so we can definitely see with Generation Z and uh, their purchasing power um, they have a, a, a huge appetite for alternative payments and economic and consumer preferences are, are kind of um, shifting towards digital wallets and uh, online and app based services. And there's a general feeling that convenience and faster checkout um, is desired here. Um, and then we have uh, um, a, a real kind of uh, hot potato with uh, non-cash payment methods, which is certainly accelerated this year, um, really in the wake of COVID and um, just from, a, I suppose, a hygiene perspective. Um, but within this, you, you can include uh, mobile payments, QR payments, digital wallets, contactless cards. Um, the drivers being reduced costs of, of internet and mobile devices, um, the convenience, the geopolitical and regulatory forces. So you see uh, demonetization in India, for example, um, and, and uh, regulatory developments with um, the Payment Services Directive in Europe. Uh, and then really for quite a while in, in parts of Europe, we've seen a, a move towards cashless societies such as um, uh, Sweden and Finland. Um, and a, a general kind of uh, uh, continued growth with e-commerce. Um, closer to uh, the markets that we're seeing at Payoneer, um, 
everything's moving in, in, a, in a really good direction, actually. And uh, I'll spend a few moments just perhaps talking about some of the sectors that we're working with. So uh, e-commerce is still one of the major ones for us, but we're doing a lot more work in um, uh, the live streaming environment, uh, freelancing. Um, we've definitely seen a trend in terms of remote work. Um, and e-learning is, is another um, uh, kind of emerging market that we're starting to support. Um, so with e-commerce, um, I mean, it is uh, really been exceptional growth rates this year. Um, that's across um, e-commerce, so groceries and household items and health and beauty and, and well-being categories. Uh, most of this driven by millennials and, and the um, Gen Z um, sectors. Um, but um, with only uh, a, a smaller amount of baby boomers and, and uh, the so-called silent generation um, um, using uh, uh, online and e-commerce. Um, but that's not to say that, that we haven't seen some improvements for those sectors as well. So um, over 40% now of, of seniors and, and baby boomers have, have made um, some kind of movement into digital sh um, shopping this year. Uh, and, uh, you know, over half of that will remain as permanent. So uh, customers of all ages um, uh, are choosing merchants based on digital capabilities. Um, uh, really, as a, uh, I suppose the trigger here has been as a means of avoiding infection. But other verticals, as I mentioned, are doing well for us. So we're, we're doing some interesting stuff in live streaming and, and some of this is um, uh, driven by um, just trends in social media and so on. But you can see the airlines that have uh, been able to maintain a fleet uh, have actually moved towards um, um, live streaming now um, to satisfy customer demand. Um, freelancing for us remains a significant area. Uh, and a lot of this is kind of... Um, in heightened uh, um, kind of focus um, as a way of optimization and, and cost control. Um, remote work, as I mentioned, has been a huge trend that, that I think all of us have, have noticed. And um, some of the very largest tech companies have actually said that um, uh, the option of working from home will go well into um, next year. And uh, um, some have even gone so far as to say that um, you can be permanently based from home if you like. So that changes, uh, that will create its own opportunities um, and, and uh, address some work-life balance uh, topics as well. Um, E-learning is, is a, another key area that, that we've started supporting this year. Um, we have found some really interesting um, trends across Europe here. Um, uh, and uh, I, I guess as universities have started to go back in recent weeks, um, it might actually show um, a much better value um, way of learning. In terms of payment trends on a global level, um, cross-border is is something that is uh, getting more and more attention and opportunity. And as more and more trade deals from the UK in particular um, are struck, um, I think that creates um, further opportunity for um, uh, entrepreneurs and, and businesses like ours to be able to support them um, in their growth. But domestic payments have also um, had their fair share of um, focus and investments. And um, you can see now that, that instant payments across Europe is, is now becoming more and more the norm and expectation. Uh, but then it's uh, you, you can see that the, the payment kind of innovation is being used as a force for good. Um, uh, no less so with with cross border transactions. So I mean, the UK is is in the top fifteen of of uh, uh, nations that have um, uh, outbound remittance, um, and it, it really is um, good to see some of this stuff being used for financial inclusion and and global development. Very specific to Payoneer, uh, we've seen strong double digit growth in, in just about all corners of the world, um, closer to home in, in Europe. Um, you can see we're, we're still very um, uh, much riding the, the success of um, uh, the e-commerce trends and, and uh, the great work some of our entrepreneurial customers are doing here. Um, but also we're seeing um, the freelancing market um, still grow at a, a very impressive rate. In, uh, in parallel, we're seeing some um, interesting developments and, and, and hearing some um, um, needs around lending. Um, so despite us uh, kind of working closely with some of these emerging and, and, and very successful markets, um, a lot of our customers are telling us that they're still uh, experiencing cash flow challenges. Um, and that they uh, expect um, to have even more challenges um, as they look forward. Um, 
which is a surprise considering how successful their sectors are. Um, and the research that we've conducted suggests that um, most um, small and medium businesses have, have unmet financing needs. So um, simply put, people aren't doing a good enough job in getting the, the funds to the right people. Um, but it's not just the, the traditional players now in this market. Um, it's, it, there's a, a shift towards uh, alternative lenders. Um, ourselves, we've launched a capital advance service that we're seeing uh, great traction with. Uh, and, and we expect this to be, uh, in parallel with our payments products, um, a, a real growth engine for us. Um, but, you know, we're in a very different world now and, and we've had to do some quick learning around um, uh, the pandemic and uh, um, try to make sure that the right money is getting to the right people. Um, and one of the ways we've managed to do this is, is to kind of um, really build this trust over time. So we have a product called um, uh, Capital Advance Express, which is really as much as anything an opportunity to get out to know our customers better. And then very quickly, once we know that they're, they're, they're good, successful businesses, we can give them access to um, uh, bigger funds. Um, and that's proven very successful for us so far and an interesting trend. Looking forward um, into next year, uh, crystal ball stuff, uh, it, it very much uh, continues the trajectory we've seen in 2020 around e-commerce. Um, but one of the uh, uh, key areas that we're focusing on at Pioneer um, is around supporting um, mobile commerce. Um, and we see it in our own statistics that the shift of, of um, users is, is now heavily skewed towards mobile versus internet. So um, in terms of our product development, this is an area that, that we're very keen to support and, and a need we want to meet. Um, but I don't believe that's... that's um, uh, just us. I, th I think we're seeing this with other financial services pr providers and e-commerce um, uh, platforms also. Um, looking even further into the future, th there's a few trends that are starting to stand out. So um, cash flow management is going to be um, a, a key area um, as we come out of this um, pandemic and uh, um, making sure that, um, that there's the right efficiencies. Um, There'll be uh, uh, probably a continuation of, of digital and contactless payments, particularly um, see, seeing some of the European trends perhaps go to North America. Um, and I think a lot of uh, customers have seen the clear advantages during the pandemic um, and probably won't be going back um, uh, to cash and checks in the future. Um, online shopping, um, even the older generations, um, we're expecting to see a good amount of stickiness here. Um, and uh, I think uh, all of us have got our personal experiences of family members that have suddenly discovered uh, home delivery um, and the, uh, all the benefits that can deliver. Um, and I think that, uh, generally speaking, customers will probably have uh, um, payments a, a, as part of their uh, infrastructure strategy. And they, they see it a bit more as an investment rather than expense, um, particularly the larger online retailers that will be um, much more heavily skewed towards the internet versus um, a physical retail network as a result of this pandemic. Uh, payments will need to be a lot more unified. So like we've seen uh, quick, uh, almost instant payments in the UK and EU, um, the US will need to be making some railroads to kind of standardize their payment structure and, and, and have a similar product. Um, blockchain is a very exciting area. Um, where we perhaps see uh, a new way of moving money around the world. Uh, and I often liken it to um, uh, the telecoms uh, revolution we went through, whereas 15, 20 years ago, an international uh, phone call used to be pretty poor quality and quite expensive. Uh, now it can be done instantaneously, um, almost free and crystal clear. And I think that parallel, we we'll, we'll see very similar kind of um, shift uh, as a result of uh, innovation in areas like blockchain in payments. Um, cash flow again, is, is going to be uh, a key area of focus um, um, and, and worried about bad debts as, as um, we start to go into probably more of like a recovery mode within our economies in Europe. Um, and uh, we've got to keep an eye on payment security. Um, it, it needs to be um, uh, some really interesting developments happening with um, compliance tech and, and um, um, biometrics. And uh, we need to make sure uh, as um, payment companies that, that we're well positioned to capitalize on the advancements in these adjacent industries. 
Um, I, I guess no presentation in Europe will be complete at the moment without a mention of Brexit. Um, on that note, we've got a series of webinars um, um, starting um, uh, now in the beginning of October, going through until the end of the year, um, which I'd encourage you to um, uh, tune into um, with uh, a lot of um, um, thought leaders kind of contributing on how they see this uh, uh, kind of move away from the EU impacting um, our industries. So thank you very much for your time. Um, please put your questions in the side panel and um, I hope to see you again soon.